Hi Matrix and welcome to this finance video on Timelines Part 2, a continued recap of Grade 10 and 11 finance, brought to you by the Answer Series. With the examples we did in Part 1, we worked with interest compounding on an annual basis. More often though, questions will involve interest being compounded on a more frequent basis. For example, half yearly, quarterly or monthly. Let's look at the following scenarios based on an annual interest rate of 15% per annum. We will first consider the number of times per year interest is calculated in these three different scenarios. For interest compounded every six months, interest will be calculated twice per year. For interest compounded every three months, or quarterly, interest will be calculated four times per year, and for interest compounded monthly, interest will be calculated 12 times per year. The middle column of this table indicates the interest rate for each particular time period. For interest compounded half yearly, the interest rate for each time period will be half the per annum rate, in other words 15% divided by 2. For interest compounded quarterly, the interest rate for each time period will be a quarter of the per annum rate, in other words 15% divided by 4. And for interest rate compounded monthly, the interest rate for each time period will be a twelfth of the per annum rate, in other words 15% divided by 12. The last column of this table refers to the compounding factor for one whole year. In each case, the compounding factor for the whole year will be the sum of 1 and the interest rate for the particular time period to the power of how many times it is calculated per year. Half yearly, it will be calculated twice. Quarterly, it will be calculated four times. And monthly, it will be calculated 12 times. Let us now have a look at some examples. In this example, Naledi deposits 7,500 Rand into a bank account. It earns interest at 8% per annum, compounded quarterly. And then after three years, this interest rate changes to 7,75% per annum, compounded monthly. They are asking us to find the amount in Naledi's account at the end of 10 years. The first thing to note on this timeline is that our time periods are years. Then the initial deposit gets filled in at T0. The interest rates are each entered in their time interval with a clear vertical line at T3, indicating where the interest rate changes. This stands for per annum compounded quarterly and this per annum compounded monthly. Remember we have been asked to calculate what is in the account at the end of the 10 years. In other words, how much is in the account at T10. If we look at the calculation, we'll see that the initial deposit 7,500 will have this compounding factor four times a year for three years, and then this compounding factor 12 times a year for seven years. And there is our final answer rounded off for the amount in Naledi's account at the end of the 10-year period. For these next two examples, we have given you the opportunity to try it on your own first before looking at the solution. Remember the advice from the Timelines video, Part 1, to read through a question once or even twice before deciding what needs to be done. These questions hold a lot of information and can feel quite intimidating. When there is a lot going on at different intervals throughout a time period, setting up a timeline to plot things is a great way to organize the information given. Remember, summarizing a lot of information on a timeline is very effective. We'll go through the question itself together without looking at the solution. Pause the video as soon as you feel ready to give it a try at any point through this slide. So, in this question, George signed a contract in which he borrowed X Rand. He agreed to pay 50,000 Rand after two years and a final amount of 200,000 Rand four years later, in other words, after six years. The bank charged interest 
at 10,5% per annum, compounding monthly, for the first three years, and then at 9,8% per annum, compounded quarterly, for the last three years. We've been asked to calculate X, George's loan amount. Now that we've gone through all the information in the question, remember to pause and give it a go first if you haven't yet, before moving on to see the solution. Right, here is the solution. Let's have a look first at the timeline with years as our time periods. X is the loan amount, the amount at T0. It is important that this distinction is made between the loan amount and the amounts at T2 and T6. Then the interest rate change indicated by the vertical line here, showing the change from the rate for the first three years compounded monthly to the rate for the last three years compounded quarterly. Once you've established the interest rates, be efficient by using the memory function on your calculator. Save the increase factor with the 10,5% per annum compounded monthly into A and the increase factor with the 9.8% per annum compounded quarterly into B. So now we take the 50,000 and compound it back for two years. In other words, 24 months, because the interest is calculated monthly during this period. And then adding to that the 200,000 Rand, but this is slightly more complicated because of the interest rate change. We compound the 200,000 Rand back for these three years. Because the interest here is compounded quarterly, it will mean we scale it back for 12 quarters. We then compound it back for the remaining three years. Here, the interest rate is compounded monthly, which means we scale it back for 36 months. Make sure to practice these calculations on your calculator each time. Well done if you managed to get the correct answer. Getting the right answer for a complicated financial maths question can feel very satisfying. If you didn't manage to get it entirely on your own, keep at it, you will get there. We are going to look at one more example on this video. So in this example, we are told that Sam opened a bank account by depositing 10,000 Rand. He deposited a further 6,000 Rand after three years, but at the end of five years, he incurred expenses that forced him to withdraw 8,000 Rand. Sam was able to deposit 5,000 Rand at the end of seven years. The account earned interest at a rate of 8,2% per annum, compounded monthly, for the first six years. And then this changed to 7,8% per annum, compounded monthly. We have been asked to calculate X, the accrued amount in Sam's account at the end of 10 years. So this is a lot of information. Pause the video to read it through a couple of times and then give your timeline a go. Make sure you've tried the calculation before we move on to go through the solution. Let's have a look here at the first part of the solution, creating the timeline. Check that your amounts are in the correct places along the time period and that most importantly, you have distinguished the withdrawal of 8,000 Rand from the deposits and then that the interest rates for the different time periods have been added in with a clear vertical line indicating where the interest rate changes. Remember to use the memory function on your calculator to make the calculation simpler. Now that you have all your information neatly summarized on the timeline, let's have a look at the calculation. Did you manage to get the correct answer? Let's have a look in depth at the calculation. The 10,000 Rand needs to be compounded forward for the first six years at 8,2% per annum compounded monthly. In other words, monthly for six years is 72 months. And then at 7,8% per annum for the remaining four years, also compounded monthly. In other words, 12 times four, which is 48 months. Then the 6,000 Rand will be compounded forward for three years at the first compounding factor, in other words, for 36 months. And then at the second compounding factor for the remaining four years, in other words, for 48 months. Remember, the withdrawal of 8,000 must be subtracted 
There is only one year at the first compounding factor for the 8,000 rand, so 12 months, and then four years for the second compounding factor, 48 months. Then lastly, the 5,000 rand will be compounded at the second compounding factor for these remaining three years, in other words, for 36 months. We encourage you now to dive into our Grade 11 Maths 3-in-1 study guide for further practice. This brings us to the end of Part 2 of Timelines. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you now feel confident to try some examples on your own. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.